I'm the team lead for RPI number 22. It's to um, the team name, we call it the FIFA Cup IB Leagues. And there's the team. <laughs> I'll have the team introduce herself every time we get up to the mic here. Okay, so um, what we do, uh, what we did is we wanted to reduce the lead time for patients requiring IV antibiotics from registration to discharge uh, from ED when patients are referred into the clinic's office. Um, with this process, we looked at the data and we found that there's one patient per day on the average, and they usually come around late evening, uh, sorry, late after, afternoon, early evening. And I had the team uh, decide what they wanted to do, and they looked at three major parts. They wanted to reduce the amount of incomplete pharmacy orders, and they wanted to reduce the patient time by having uh, uh, less confusion with ACAP and ED, and, and they wanted to improve the ED setup and um, confidentiality of the patient having IV antibiotics. Hello, I'm Rick Peters. I'm the sub-team lead at the Kelsey Trail Health Region. So what you're seeing up there is our current state map prior to how we, uh, prior to when we started the work. And you'll see that there are a couple of value streams there. One, the, the value stream that we're focusing on is this one here, the patient pool physician plan. We recognize that patients do come from the ER for IV antibiotics, but for the purposes of this RPIW, we're just focusing strictly on that patient from the physician care clinic. So, patient registers, triage, IV setup, etc. There were some starbursts that were identified, and from those starbursts, we developed those themes around how we wanted to work for the week. So, in terms of uh, the uh, target progress report and the results sheet, we did make some progress, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about all of them, but there were some, there were some big pick hitters. In terms of space, we, we uh, were able to, to reduce a little bit of space. Um, we, did some, we did reduce the walking distance, we did reduce the park travel distance. We were able to reduce the lead time, and I think this is important. We were able to reduce the lead time from an hour and 33 minutes for a patient coming in from the physician clinic to 49 minutes in a second. So I think that's significant, and that speaks volumes for the work that we were able to accomplish. So just another sheet there in terms of the information, calculations for attack time, and how we arrived at those calculations and the minutes per unit of 19 minutes and 34 seconds. We also did some defect measurement, and one of the things that we were able to identify is that 85% of the referrals coming from the physician clinics were defective in terms of missing information. So we developed some standard work around that, and we're going to be auditing it. So there's our standard work combination sheets. We'll just keep going through these, because the important work is to hear what the team and how the team works. So there's our percent load chart. And I'm going to turn it over to the first team member to talk about some of our ideas and what we can Hi, my name is Lori Friesen. I'm the Director of Pharmacy for the Health Region. So patients sometimes require IV antibiotics, and often this can be done at home. So the patient needs to come to the ER to have their first dose of the home IV antibiotic, unless they are a long-term care resident in a PAPHR long-term care facility. So the ER is a very busy place, so this can lead to delays in the patients receiving their first dose. Also, all the doses the patient requires are provided by the health region through the Victoria Hospital Pharmacy Department. So until the pharmacy department is aware of the orders, they cannot prepare the medication. Currently, the patient brings the order with them to the ER, and then the ER staff forward it on to the pharmacy. As with all medication orders, the pharmacist needs to review the home IV antibiotic order to ensure that the patient is receiving the appropriate medication treatment and there won't be any issues. To achieve this, the pharmacist requires some pertinent information about the patient and 85% of the time some of this information is missing from the order. The pharmacy department came up with the idea of an order form specifically for home IV antibiotics that would help communicate the order better. 
And that's the idea of the summer sheet that we have there. So this is an example of an old order, and it shows some of the defects. So if you notice, all we had at the top was a patient's name, which is spelled wrong. And then that's the order in the middle there, and it's really hard to read. And that's, we made it really dark to print it off. Um, and then at the bottom, the pharmacist has indicated all the information that we need, but that was missing, and that they had to source before they could do the work. So this is the new order sheet. And so it has all the information that is required by pharmacy, such as diagnosis, height, weight, allergies, and serum creatinine. It's easy to read, and it's a check off versus handwritten, so we don't have to try and read off handwriting just much. Um, and also we have an order for epinephrine in case of allergic reaction. And there's also follow-up and monitoring plans as well. The one thing too that is really positive that's at the bottom of the sheet is that this sheet will be faxed to all the departments that may be involved prior to the patient showing up at the ER. So we're faxing it to pharmacy, home care, and the ER triage. So that the standard work was also developed for the pharmacists to help ensure that the process runs smoothly and that all pharmacists are doing the same thing. A meeting was held with the pharmacists on Thursday to go over the standard work so the pharmacists were aware of the new process. The pharmacists who were not there that day will be taught by the end of July. So, we, um, 
we did we do have more training to do. Of course we don't we didn't get a chance to train everybody and there's a lot of departments to train. So Terry I think is gonna be working on that and hopefully by the end of July we'll have everybody going to the standard. Hi guys, I'm Terry Greason. I'm uh, one of the ER nurses. Um, so what we worked on was actually two streams or two standards, standards of work. One is for patients that actually we can identify as teachable uh, for home IV that they can actually use self-administering and the ones that can't. Um, so basically it kind of breaks off. So initially the patient is going to be um, triage, assess, and then from there it will, um, if they're teachable, the ACAP RN is going to be teaching. Um, right now the RN can emerge, is going to be starting the IV, and then uh, from there discharge. But um, it all, right now, is, there's uh, some fluctuation because of the ACAP having an RN available or not, and that will decide which way kind of we're going. And we have written out a full standard, so basically it will decide uh, in each setting. Um, as Deanna said, we spoke to over 30 people. Um, we did set up um, some templates for teaching. So these handouts we're going to try and uh, give to all the teachable patients. Um, and so this will be done either by whoever. It'll be the ER nurse or the ACAP nurse or home care. But hopefully it'll help to reduce um, it won't necessarily reduce the, the wait time in the ER, but it will be possibly decrease wait time in the community. Uh, home care should have shorter times of teaching, which will hopefully improve the whole process as well. The last, uh, we've already discussed that, and the last thing that we looked at was uh, our ultimate goal for this standard of work, and that is ultimately um, so ultimately our standard, uh, our goal would be that ACAP actually from the start, right after triage, would take the patient, follow all the way to completion. So they would actually start the IP, they would do the teaching, set up with the community. And that would ultimately help with continuity of care, patient satisfaction, um, it will hopefully decrease our wait time, and uh, possibly even could be something that could be planned ahead, which would greatly improve satisfaction of patients. Good afternoon, my name is Tina from the Happy Volunteer Department right here at the hospital. I'm, I'm pleased and honored to have been a member of the fabulous FIFA Cup Ivy Leaguers. And my role was that of a patient representative. The busy medication room was the start of our 5S team, but we also tried hard to find a new place for the two IV medication chairs, which were situated in a very high traffic area, like next to the ER door, next to the triage door, and across from ambulance bay, as well as close to the staff offices and supply room. The patient had, abs had absolutely no privacy, and nurses were hard-pressed to find room for their IV trays to start treatment. A new location was found in the Bay Area, next to the quiet room. We cleared away the laundry hamper and cleaning carts, moved the wall foam to clear more space, and brought in the two IV chairs. A small table was added for the convenience of the patient. Two hooks were placed above each chair to hold the IV bags, therefore eliminating the need for poles. Attractive signage was added, clearly identifying the use of the chairs. Best of all, our busy nurses will now have a TV cart, IV cart nearby with everything in place, when and where needed, complete with charts dispensing. 
Another plus is the distance from medication room to patient, being only steps away, thus saving precious travel time. Putting the patient first, with this small but significant change, will surely result in a more pleasant ER experience for the patient and into more efficiency for staff as well.
resolve, uh, telling us your issues and we're going to try to resolve them.